Good afternoon. My name is Donna Fiesel, and I'm your host of The Edge on IC Radio, your source for news and entertainment. You can also find us on television, two different ways, channel 182 on Charter Communications, and abundant television found on Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire. Check out the podcast, netnewsnetwork.net, netnewsnetwork.net. You can also find all kinds of great talk show hosts out there, great information out there as well. We're going to talk about about foraging. I've never done this before. My friend Deja Lee does this. She lives out in Mentone, Alabama, and she lives out in the middle of a forest, basically, and she said there are all kinds of edible plants out there. As a matter of fact, she found some mushrooms, and she dehydrated those mushrooms, and she gave me a, a, a thing, of a little container of those things, and they were awesome. And guess how much it cost? Nothing. Okay, it just took a little bit of time to get it done. So let's talk about foraging for beginners. And you can find this on this website, and it's gore-tex.com. Now that's gore-tex.com. So foraging for beginners tips on safety, gathering wild edible food. Make sure you know what you're getting, okay? That's number one. Okay, since you started learning about the wild edible plants and fungi, you just realized you've been hiking through a forest of food. That's what she says. I can't wait to get out there and do it. As a matter of fact, she's going to come on the show one day, and we're just going to go out into the pasture and just see what we can find. Who knows? Anyway, wherever you are, there are lots of edible plant options, including berries, seeds, flowers. You know that you can eat dandelions? Yeah, they're actually good in salads. Ah, seeds, flowers, nuts, roots, and foliage. Sometimes whole plants are edible. So whether you want to forage for fun, just add wild food to your backpacking diet, or just keep foraging knowledge tucked away in case of an emergency, this is going to be a guide for you. You've got to, to download this, okay? It's gore-tex.com. That's G-O-R-E dash, not, not underscore, dash text.com. Now, foraging safety. Let's talk about that first. Before you go foraging, you got to equip yourself with total knowledge. Learn how to identify plants before you consume them. Don't just eat anything that looks edible, okay? You gotta be careful. Not all plants are edible, and some edible and poisonous plants look similar. So you really need to get out there with somebody who knows how to forage. And remember, when in doubt, don't eat it. Okay, just this that simple. Get into the habit of carrying around a book describing and picturing edible plants to help you identify safe plants to eat. There are also apps that you can download. It might cost you a couple dollars a month, but it's worth it if you're out there foraging a lot. And what you can do is use the camera portion of your cell phone, put it on the plant, and it will tell you what it is. It'll tell you whether it's edible or not. Okay, so make sure you download any app that says foraging edible. Okay foraging edible and that'll get you going now a guide that is local to your area will be especially helpful and so this writer is actually included a list of, of suggested books on the bottom of the article to help fuel your foraging uh, adventures now the universal edible test can save you in a survival situation and like if you get lost when you're hiking and that kind of thing or if you run out of food learn this test in case you're in dire need and don't have a guide to to wild edible plants on hand. This test does not apply to mushrooms, which should be eaten with positive identification because there are some mushrooms that are poisonous. Okay, so you gotta be super, super careful. Now here are the general rules to follow when you are foraging. The basic guidelines are important to keep in mind on any foraging experience, whether you're a beginner or a veteran forager, okay? Number one, don't assume that if an animal eats something, it isn't poisonous to humans. That's number one, <laughs> okay? And then foraging can be fun for the whole family when it's done safely. Don't let your children eat any part of a plant without your permission. Okay, you got to really watch those little kids because they're going to watch you do this and grab up something and eat it. Then they're going to go do it too. So you got to be really careful. Now, avoid plants that have a strong, disagreeable odor. So... Deja Lee said that odor alone can stop you from eating something, okay? So crush the leaves and smell them if they don't have an initial odor. You know, some things just kind of jump out at you. It's pungent. But if it doesn't have a smell to it, again, the leaves, crush them. Do not touch or consume plants that leaves that grow with leaves that grow in groups of three, three, 
such as poison ivy. Again, groups of three. Okay, stay away from it. Okay, avoid or thoroughly washing plants that grow along busy roadsides or developed areas. They might have been contaminated with pollutants or maybe could have been sprayed with pesticides. So be really careful. Don't go out into your neighbor's farm, okay? Because, you know, your farmer could have had something sprayed. So, you know, that's another reason not to go on somebody else's property. What if you don't know they spray? Okay, let's see. Some plants should not be eaten raw or they may taste better when they're cooked. Learn how to properly prepare your forced funds for consumption. Okay, do not eat fruit or berries that appear to be spoiling. Be really careful there. I would just wash anything that I found out anyway. What if a cow, you know what on it? You know what I mean? So be really careful. Just use common sense. Try new wild edible foods one by one. Some people are allergic to foods that are considered edible to most. So if you react in a negative way to something new, you want to know what it is. Okay, because what if time goes by? You know what I mean? you got to be really careful. Okay, and let's say you've eaten five different foods. You don't know which one made you sick, so be really careful. Now, along those lines, start with a small amount of any new plant first and wait for a while before eating more just to make sure you don't react to it in a negative way. Now, as with any outdoor, outdoor activities, always practice the leave no trace principles that leave your surroundings as good or better than you found it, okay? This is not the time to eat a candy bar and throw the candy bar wrapper outside, okay? Don't do that. It's called littering. Okay, now there is, let's go ahead and just start talking about the 10 common edible plants. And I've got a picture of each one of these, so I'm going to throw it up there into the camera so you can see it as well. Now, the following plants are easily identified, and you can, at least one component that is safe to eat. Okay, so when you start to forage in your local area, these selections may or may not grow there, but they're all found somewhere in the United States. So be sure to pick up a regional guide to wild edible plants for detailed identification instructions and make sure you choose new favorites to start with. Nestorium. Now let's show you what Nestorium looks like. And that's a pretty one right there. It has the orange flower to it. See that? Okay, that's okay. But let's get some more info about it, okay? Before setting out into the wilderness to forage, try foraging close to home and look for this nestorium. A beautiful orange, yellow, or red flower with a peppery kind of a taste. Um, the nestorium is easily found in parks, gardens, and street side flower beds. Again, be careful now. If it's not on your property, you need to find out if it's been sprayed with pesticides. Every part of this vitamin-packed plant is edible from its leaves to its seeds. If you want to snack on a wild nestorium, head to its native land of South America. Then you'll find them out there, okay? Prickly pear cactus. So let me show you what it looks like. This is a prickly pear cactus. There you go. See that? We've got those growing out in the yard. And you can eat them. People have made pickles out of them. They've done all kinds of things with them. But it's good to know that even in the desert, edible things can grow. So the prickly pear cactus with its paddle-shaped arms and vibrant magenta fruits commonly grows in arid parts of the world. It can be kind of arid here in North Alabama, you know, when um, the sum summertime really blows out there. Okay, so that commonly grows in arid parts of the world, particularly in the American Southwest and Mexico. Now, before eating the fruits or the pads of the prickly pear, the spines have to be removed. You've also got to have the skin peeled. Many people use the fruit to make a delightful pink and refreshing juice. I've heard about that. Okay, the morel. And I'll show you what that looks like. This is the morel right here. See that? Okay, the morels are coveted and they're scrumptious mushrooms found during the springtime throughout the United States. Although they may have many distinguishing characteristics, take care that you what you found is really a morel and not the false morel. Okay, let me go ahead. Let's go ahead and cut to a commercial break. We're going to be right back in just a minute, so hang in there, okay?
at La Mon's Mexican Restaurant located in Henniger, Alabama and voted Best Mexican Restaurant of DeKalb County, Alabama 2020, we're here to serve you with authentic Mexican cuisine. Order easily online by going to LaMonsMex.com or call 256-657-3999 to place your order. We're open Sunday through Thursday, 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. and Friday and Saturday, 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Whether you're celebrating a cozy date night for two or a celebration for a crowd, at Le Mans, you'll love our atmosphere and friendly servers. Thank you for dining with Le Mans Mexican Restaurant. Let Rhonda at Rhonda's Elite Tax LLC take the burden off you for all your tax needs. I know because Rhonda has been taking care of my business since 2013. I feel Rhonda works for me because she knows the direct questions to ask to better benefit my unique business in order for me to get back the biggest refund possible. Rhonda is an ongoing student and she knows tax laws are in a constant change every year. Call 256-281-9903 for an appointment to take the dread out of getting your taxes done. Rhonda is located at 11968 U.S. Highway 431 in Boaz. Again, that number is 256-281-9903. And let Rhonda's Elite Tax LLC champion your personal and business taxes. Jeff McCurdy of the McCurdy Law Firm has been a public service of this area for over 10 years. McCurdy, a member of the Henniger City Council, serves as prosecutor for the town of Sylvania and was named public defender for the city of Rainsville. The McCurdy Law Firm is located at 17326 Alabama Highway 75 in Henniger to better represent his Jackson and DeKalb County clients. If you need to be represented by a true public servant with proven success, call Jeff at 256-996-8701 or send a private email to McCurdyLawFirm at gmail.com. No representation is made that the legal services performed is greater than the legal services performed by other lawyers. At Liberty Bank, we're all about community. Whether it's to help with a charity fundraiser or help families in need. Toys at Christmas or a local football team, we're here for you. You see, we realize the importance of family. Sometimes it's to build a new home or necessary home repairs. We're here for you. If you like the feel of a small town bank with all the conveniences of a big city bank, we're here to serve you. You will find us at any of our convenient locations in DeKalb, Marshall, Etowah, and Blount Counties in North Alabama. You can call and speak with any of our friendly staff at 256-659-2175 or check us out on the web at libertybankal.com. And thank you for your support of our community. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. The only place I buy my beef is Lone Tree Ranch in Collinsville, Alabama. Their cattle is born and raised on their ranch, grass and grain fed, and you can feel confident when you serve your family and friends because their beef is all natural and no antibiotics or hormones are added. You can buy whole beef or perhaps go in with family or friends and buy half. Their customer service is number one as they take care of the delivery to their local processor and can deliver to your home for a small added fee. They also offer herd replacement heifers. I always call Lone Tree Ranch in Collinsville, Alabama for my beef specialty recipes and cookouts, and you can too. Food shortages are increasing, so buy local by calling 256-523-6462. That's 256-523-6462. We're back. 
My name is Donna Fiesel, and I'm your host of The Edge on IC Radio, your source for news and entertainment. You can also find us on television, Channel 182 on Charter Communications, and Abundant Television, which is found on Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire. Thank you so much for watching. We are talking about edible plants that you can go out and forage. Maybe you can go out into the park somewhere. Make sure, okay, that pesticides haven't been sprayed. That's number one. Okay, now we were talking before we went into the break about the morel. Okay, so I'm going to show you. This is a type of a mushroom right here. Now there is the morel, and then there is one that's a false morel. Okay, when in doubt, don't eat it. That's this. The, that's number two. Okay, a mildly toxic mushroom that can look similar to the untrained eye. Now the morels are known to be elusive. So hunting for them can be a challenge. It can also be quite exciting when you find their favorite spots to grow. Okay, mushrooms can be an awesome thing, but a bad one can be deadly. Okay, pine nuts. You ever had pine nuts before? They are really, really good, and they're good sprinkled in salads is all also. And do that just a pop in your mouth instead of chocolate. Now, I like chocolate, okay, don't get me wrong, but these are really good for you. Pine nuts are tasty and they're healthy, but they do take a lot of hard work and time to harvest. That's why these seeds are not actually nuts. They should be looked at to as a rewarding foraging project rather than a go-to in a survival situation because pine nuts are found in pine cones and are tiny except in a handful of tree species. So be sure you check out and seek out trees with large seeds. Now the seeds of pinyon pines which grow throughout the American Southwest are historically important to tribes, just as the Navajo, and they're among the most popular to harvest. So I'm going to show you what these look like. So there's your pine, right there's your pine cone, and those little tiny seeds right there. Those are called pine nuts. Um, I've seen those in specialty stores, health stores as well, and they are really good. I mean, they they're they're, they're really crunchy. It's got a really good, pleasant flavor to them. Chickweed. Let me show you what chickweed looks like. That is chickweed. Okay. I've never had any of it. So let's talk about it. Okay. Chickweed's Latin name, the Styria media, is a, is a clue to identification that has small white star-shaped flowers with five petals deeply cut so there will appear to be 10 of them so let's see if i can broaden this up so you can see what i'm talking about okay so it's only five leaves but they're split in the middle and that makes them look like there are 10. okay you can eat that okay let's get back to it okay uh so um the leafy green plant is simple to spot so chickweed grows easily in yards i got some outside i've seen them um grasslands forests and roadsides it's commonly found throughout europe it's where it's native and in the united states now this winter annual plant tolerates really low temperatures and it's even known to flower in temperatures as frigid as 16 degrees fahrenheit Okay, let's talk about my favorite one, the dandelion. Okay, everybody has seen the dandelion. You probably got those growing into your yard right now. And I'm going to tell you what, they're really, really super good in salads. And I have found a recipe for dandelion honey. So as soon as I go to the grocery store and buy a lemon, and as soon as I find a, let's see, a lemon, and you could also use an orange in it. So as soon as I find those ingredients, we're going to make us some dandelion yeah, we're going to make some dandelion honey. And this recipe kind of mocks the honeybees. You know, the honeybee, honeycomb. I'm going to like the, my honey better from the bees. But, but anyway, we're going to try this and we're going to see how this turns out. These are native to Europe and the dandelion is an invasive species everywhere else, except for my place because we have bees outside. Though the plant can be annoy, annoyingly pervasive, it's completely edible. The leaves are surprisingly nutritious, especially if you're in need of some vitamin A or vitamin K. It should be eaten young to avoid bitterness. The more mature leaves, as well as the roots, should be boiled before consumption for a better taste. They have this kind of a, um, it's kind of a uh, bitter taste. It, the, the leaves are not good. you got to cook them, okay? And then that takes that out. Now, the yellow flower can be eaten raw as a snack or thrown into a salad. 
for some pretty color. Those are like the prettiest salads. Dandelion salads are really good. So I'm going to give you a really good recipe for this. You need to use olive oil for the dressing, by the way, and a little bit of vinegar and a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. So get your, your lettuce and cut it up into pieces. I like to chop mine up into pieces. Um, you can use the whole leaves and break them if you want to. Chives are really good in it. Get those dandelion flowers. Now, you need to wash them really good because there could be some like, some, like unwanted insect in it, okay? So you need to kind of wash them up. So let me tell you how you wash them. You're going to need hydrogen peroxide. So per, say, gallon of water, you want to put about a tablespoon of hydrogen peroxide in the water. You want to swish that around. Then put your dandelion flowers in there. Along with the leaves, you're going to eat those as well. And leave them in there just for a few minutes. You want to rinse it really, really good. I do a couple of washings just to make sure there aren't any little tiny insects in there, okay? So go on ahead and do that. They're really, really super good. And so number seven is rose hips. So let's go ahead and show you what the rose hips look like. They're really pretty. Look like a berry. See that red berry right there? That's your rose hips. Okay, so if you come up on a rose bush and you have, um, you have actually more than one edible option. Not only are they lightly sweet flower petals edible, but the small accessory fruits are too. Now, these small orange or red fruits are called rose hips, and they're packed with vitamin C. If you're harvesting rose hips in a populated area, just make sure that the brush is full of, of free of chemicals or other contaminants. Eat the rose hips raw, or you can make them into a jelly or a sauce or a tea. I've made tea with them. You know, rose petals, you can eat them too, or drink them too, make a tea out of them. And it's a really pretty pinky red tea. And put a little bit of honey in it, and it's just, ah, oh, it's awesome. And it's super good for you. Blackberries. Everybody knows what a blackberry looks like. Now, you can get the wild ones like we have out here on the farm, but um, we have planted some thornless blackberries. It's a whole lot easier to find those. Um, it doesn't hurt you like scratches and what have you. Now, the berry could have easily been interchanged with other edible berries like raspberries, blueberries, or huckleberries, just to name a few. But it's nice to know, it's very good to know how to identify edible berries in the wild as some of them are poisonous. So we know we're okay with these blackberries. Okay, so you go out into a farm. We use not all my entire life. We, we had a farmer that lived close by us, and there were always blackberries. Of course, always ask. Don't just go out on somebody's land, okay? Always ask permission. And if they say no, obey by those rules, okay? Because farmers have to be really careful. If you get out there and you fall down and get hurt, they're always afraid of lawsuits. So if they say no, don't take it the wrong way, okay? It's just the way you have to be nowadays. It's good to know how to identify these. Blackberries are a great source of vitamins, nutrients, and antioxidants. I love them. I could just eat them and pop them in my mouth. You need to wash them first. Don't do like I do. Do as I say. You need to wash them, okay? You never know what bird fell over, if you know what I mean. When harvesting blackberries, make sure you wear gloves and long sleeves as the shrubs have sharp thorns. And same with the raspberries. They're the same way. Look for blackberries growing in fields or on the sides of streams throughout the warmer parts of the United States during the summer. In Alabama, we got lots of them. Okay, I got to hurry. I only got about five and a half minutes left. Chick of the woods. So what in the world is chick of the woods? I don't know if I've seen that or not. I think I may have out here on the farm. So let's talk about it. The delicious, the delicious chicken of the woods mushroom is a brightly colored when it's young, typically a vibrant orange with yellow edges. They grow in a shelf-like clusters on living or decaying trees throughout North America. Slice up this meaty mushroom and add it to a camp meal. Just be sure to harvest the younger specimens and cook them thoroughly to avoid an upset stomach. Sounds like it could be if you're, you know, they'd go to the bathroom, that would be a good thing for you. Chick of the woods growing on eucalyptus and conifers have been reported to cause adverse reactions in a small percentage of people, so try a moderate amount first. <laughs> Try a little bit, okay? Just a little bit of it. Okay, amaranth. This is pretty. See that? Okay, it's kind of a raspberry color. I just think it's a really pretty color. Kind of fuchsia in color. Um, now, this is considered either a weed or a superfood, depending on who you talk to. 
So this plant thrives on temperate climates. Its small seeds are packed with protein and nutrients, which is why this has been cultivated as a staple in traditional diets for thousands of years, most famously by the Aztecs of Mexico. The leaves are also edible and can be eaten raw or cooked. Seeds should be boiled or roasted before consumption. I think those are pretty. Now, let me give you some plants to avoid. We've only got about three minutes left. Ten minutes, okay? Ten plants. You shouldn't eat anything unless you know what it is, okay? We talked about that, but it's good to know how to identify poisonous plants. Some of the plants mentioned are common in backyards or landscaping as well as the wild, so being familiar with them can help keep curious, curious pant, uh, pets or children safe. Now, death cap mushroom. What does it look like? I don't have any pictures down here, but um, it's a reminder not to eat mushrooms unless you're certain you can identify them and they're known to be edible. Uh, while the A phalloids appears, it's said to taste delicious, it says, but it's responsible for an estimated 90% of the world's deadly mushroom ingestion. Okay, this fungus is native to Europe, but is now found throughout the United States and most continents as an invasive species. I wish we had pictures of it. Okay, number two, mox hood. Okay, woven into many ancient stories, this plant is known by several names, with monk's hood by far the most innocent sounding, relating to the hood-like shape of the flower. Queen of the poison gets straight to the point. All parts of this monk's hood plant contains the deadly toxin acronite, which has been used throughout history to poison the tips of arrows for hunting. It can be found in mountain meadows in the northern hemisphere. Let's get with this one. Horse nettle. The horse nettle is in the same family as the tomato and the eggplant. Uh, so it makes sense that its mature fruits look like a ju juicy yellow cherry tomato. Throw, though the fruits look edible, do not eat them. They are poisonous. Now, the horse nettle is active to the American South and can be troublesome to grazing animals. So luckily, this plant is equipped with spines and the fruit's bitter. That's two ways, two reasons not to eat it. doesn't have a good eye to it. Okay, doll's eyes. This is called the white baneberry. This plant produces creepy-looking berries from May to September, sprouting from neon pink stems, and the berries are white with black dots in the center, and they just kind of resemble little doll's eyes. Unfortunately, not the friendly kind, but the kind that will poison you if you've ingested it. Think of Chucky doll? Yeah. The whole plant is toxin and should not be touched. Now, doll's eyes can be found in forests throughout the eastern half, of the United States. Hemlock. You've all heard of hemlock. You remember what killed Socrates? <laughs> After being condemned to death for his idea, Socrates drank hemlock tea. This shrub is extremely toxic, with painful symptoms that disrupt the nervous system and eventually render the subject unable to breathe. Quite innocent looking, hemlock has lacy green leaves and small white flowers and can be mistaken for wild carrots or for wild parsnip. It's not native to North America, but it now grows here, commonly near, near streams or along roadsides. A special note right here, the hemlock shrub is not related to the hemlock tree. There are others do not eat poison ivy, no olander or the lantana, the American wisteria. And conclusion, our ancestors knew what they were talking about. They knew what they were doing. They relied on foraging for thousands of years before humans created industrialized food systems. So foraging for wild edible foods can be a great way to feel more self-reliant and connected to the land. Thank you again so much for watching. My name is Donna and I'm your host of The Edge on IC Ready. I hope you learned something about foraging and I'm going to go out. I'm going to let Deja Lee take me out there, okay, because I don't know that I trust myself. But thank you so much for watching. You can find us on television channel 182 on Charter Communications and Abundant Television found on Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire. Make sure you check out that podcast. The netnewsnetwork.net. Netnewsnetwork.net. Thank you again so much for watching.